Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Cecilia Martindale, and I am a master's student from the Department of Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences. Woo! I want to congratulate all my fellow graduates and loved ones joining us today. Uh, thank you to my parents and grandparents and sister who are here to support me. Um, and thank you to my amazing mentors and friends who have made my time in the School of Public Health so worthwhile. It's a real honor to speak to you all today, not only because this is my first college graduation, shout out all the 2020 grads, but uh, <laughs> because I know I'm speaking to a group of people who seek to make the world a healthier place for everyone. As public health professionals, we are a group determined to improve people's lives through better health. I cannot think of a more admirable goal, and as I look around, I'm so grateful to be a part of it with all of you. I'm so proud to fight for public health with you all. Today, I want to talk to you about what I've experienced through my work at the School of Public Health that gives me hope for the future, how community connections, creativity, and relationship building can see us through any crisis. During my master's, I had the opportunity to get involved in community-engaged research focusing on school indoor air quality and temperature. This study was evaluating whether new HVAC systems in rural schools improved air quality and temperature, especially in times of smoke or extreme heat. Last summer, I visited one of these schools to set up our air quality monitors and meet our school partners. I had a lot of fun setting up our monitors and using laser measurement tools to get the total volume of each classroom. But the best part was talking with the school facilities manager about how the school could become a safe place for people to have clean air during extreme events like wildfire smoke. He saw how the work we were doing could impact not just students and school staff, but the entire local community in case of an emergency. His big plans energized me throughout this project, even during more tedious tasks like cleaning millions of air quality observations. As the research team, we wanted to measure how the HVAC systems in each classroom performed using both monitors and student reports. We had a challenge, though. We needed to meaningfully include each classroom without overly burdening teachers. I went out on a limb and created a set of Kahoot classroom quiz games uh, that students often use to ask them about the air and temperature in their classrooms. The quiz games worked, and we got an unusually high number of surveys back, uh, hundreds of surveys completed across only a few classrooms. This not only worked well as a recruitment strategy, but also engaged students using a tool they were already familiar with. We just had to get a little bit creative. Our relationships and ability to innovate give us so much power to further public health. Hearing about the work my friends are doing on everything from regenerative agriculture impacts on nutrition, to real-time smoke alerts in rural Alaska, to new methods to detect heavy metals using strands of hair gives me so much hope, even on days full of bad news. The friends I've made here have provided me with lots of laughs and great memories, but also inspiration. And you can tell that I am telling the truth because I'm tearing up. Um, <laughs> I've learned so much in my time here at the School of Public Health. The most important thing I have learned is to invest in these relationships because they will keep us going. Thank you and congratulations again to the class of 2025.